With energy transition underway, many dollars are being spent to make batteries better. Limetal has two complementary technologies. It says we'll make the next generation of lithium ion batteries cheaper and improve performance. CEO, he is Mace Yashemsky. Mace, welcome to Kitco. Thank you, Michael. Really a uh, pleasure to be here. High level, what is Lime Metal focused on? So Lime Metal is developing and commercializing technologies for next generation batteries. Uh, we're focused in two technology areas. One is the production of lithium metal from lithium carbonate using electrolysis. And two is the transformation of that lithium metal into metallic lithium anode products go into batteries using a uh, PDD process. So we're really, uh, you know, in other words, basically we're building the, uh, the midstream supply chain uh, for the high performance batteries that will you know, have uh, higher energy storage, uh, allow longer range, and in many cases be safer and cheaper than the current generation of lithium ion batteries. And those batteries will power uh, you know, future EVs. What was interesting about what uh, you're focused on, Mache, is the next generation of uh, batteries. Uh, can you explain that, please, uh, what those batteries are and uh, when they're coming? Sure. And you know, next generation batteries is really a, an umbrella term. It encompasses a, a range of different uh, approaches that, um, in general, can be thought of as the successor technologies to lithium ion batteries, and whether that's solid state batteries. Uh, hybrid batteries, um, lithium sulfur batteries, and in, in all their incarnations, whether it's lithium metal or, or silicon anode. And, and so they're really going to enable uh, either step change performance improvements. Uh, in, as I said, in many cases, you know, cheaper batteries, in all cases, higher performance batteries. Um, and uh, you know, what, what we're really doing there is uh, supplying those those high energy anode materials to enable those batteries. Uh, what's the benefit uh, of a lithium uh, metal anode compared to a traditional graphite anode, uh, Machi? Well, it's a, it's a huge difference in, in energy storage. Um, it's, a, it's a factor of 10 difference. Um, and what that means is exactly that. That's what enables uh, your longer range. It's what enables uh, better performance. Um, what's interesting there really is that uh, that's the usual framing. Uh, what also comes into effect is that as you get more of your performance on the anode side, you can trade off a little bit on the cathode side as well, which means you can start to use um, cheaper or more abundant cathode materials you know, to get uh, you know, high performance batteries that are suitable for EVs. Uh, what's interesting about what we're doing uh, is uh, with PVD, with the technology uh, platform that we're, that we're commercializing, um, it's really about producing those anode materials at a much lower cost and in the sizes and formats that are needed for EV batteries. Um, and so you know, we've chosen PVD as a technology platform. We're adapting that platform for the production uh, of these anode materials. Um, you know, we've all been touched uh, by PVD in our lives, you know, the, the ubiquitous chip bag uh, you know, it's a plastic bag with a metalized coating on the inside. That's why it's shiny. Uh, and so you know, just inherently the technology allows us to, to compete on cost. But it's a wonderful technology for many other reasons. Uh, and one of those reasons is that uh, because of its great flexibility, we can accommodate different, uh, well, you know, a lot of the different uh, next generation battery chemistries. Um, and it's also got tremendous potential for making improvements to the, to the electrochemical performance of the, the batteries something which you can't do at all with the uh, the incumbent sort of foil uh, production processes that can now supply uh, some of the, the, the lithium metal that goes into, into the batteries. Uh, you said that you wanted to be uh, in the midstream. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so when we say midstream, what we mean is really between uh, you know, the, the integrated miners, converters, and the battery producers. So what we're really doing is uh, filling in that gap um, when we started the company, we saw there was um, a tremendous commonality, even though the technologies, the different next generation battery technologies are quite uh, distinct. Um, they have a lot of commonality in what they need from an anode material. And so uh, we're really filling that gap. We're building out that midstream portion of the, uh, of the supply chain there. Who uh, are your customers eventually going to be? So our customers are... 
Uh, you know, eventually it's it's going to be uh, battery producers, whether those are standalone battery producers or uh, vehicle OEMs. Um, you know, currently we're working with uh, the mature and maturing uh, next generation battery developer startups with automotive OEMs uh, and with battery producers. Um, you know, I can't really name names for, in most cases. A lot of them have not been made public. What I can say is uh, you know, we are working with Blue Solutions, which is uh, the largest uh, commercial producer of all solid state lithium metal batteries. And uh, we're providing material uh, to them for our, our joint development commercialization or under our joint development commercialization agreement. We have a program uh, to develop uh, anode materials based on uh, our technology to feed into their EV focused products. So it's a, it's a really exciting uh, one, but it's it's one of many uh, relationships we have out there. Uh, are you funded? So we raised uh, $32 million uh, in the last year. Uh, that's allowed us to build out our, our two facilities, the uh, anode pilot production facility in Rochester, New York, and our, uh, our head office and uh, metal production piloting facility uh, in Markham, Ontario. Uh, it's obviously also given us the, the runway to continue our uh, commercialization activity, development and commercialization activities. Um, but of course, you know, we're, we're always uh, looking at options for how to, how to fund the further growth of the company as we go to, towards commercial production. Uh, Much, I'm going to step back and I'm going to uh, take advantage of uh, your uh, background experience uh, because uh, it seemed to be involved with uh, smelting and uh, metallurgy uh, going in the past before you got into uh, batteries. But um, uh, where are we right now with uh, lithium and uh, being able to produce enough of it? Um, you know, is uh, new technologies uh, like DLE, uh, direct lithium extraction, uh, going to be save us or are we just going to be constrained? Yeah, it's a... Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a, a topic that's on everybody's mind. I mean, there's, there's certainly enough lithium in the world to, to supply our needs. I think in the short term, we're going to be, to be facing those types of challenges in terms of uh, extraction and, and, and uh, conversion capacity. I mean, you can probably lay, lay the blame for that uh, at the feet of underinvestment over the last, uh, you know, the previous several years. Um, so, yeah, I would say you know, if we were talking about copper or tin or one of the base metals, um, you know, I would say that that, that is a, a you know a significant problem. But there's just been um, so much pressure now put on uh, on developing these lithium assets. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, the governments and major market participants uh, really fully understand the strategic importance of, of this industry to, to future growth. And so we're seeing a lot of support. We're seeing a lot of uh, pressure to develop those resources. So I, I think we're going to probably in the short term have uh, you know, challenges as the industry grows so quickly and, and mining capacity and conversion capacity uh, catches up. I mean, you know, it's always challenges in developing those types of facilities. Uh, but um, I, I do believe that you know, the, the tremendous pull uh, and push from uh, you know, from the market and from uh, governments and other actors is, is really going to spur that. Certainly, the prices are helping right now to to make people think about developing that, that additional capacity. Uh, there's a direct correlation, isn't there, with uh, being able to produce more battery grade lithium? Because uh, at that point, uh, then uh, you know prices are lower greater adoption uh, and uh, hopefully it just kind of makes uh, the EV market grow. So, and then that, uh, you know, that uh, specifically uh, benefits uh, lime metal. Correct. Uh, one thing um, I don't understand uh, in the uh, lithium uh, ion battery production space is, is that uh, China right now has about uh, two thirds of the market. And I think it's expected to have about the same at the end of the decade, uh, according to a uh, benchmark analysis. Uh, there just seems to be huge gravitational pull with um, all of those ancillary businesses and also the economies of scale. Uh, is it going to be hard for uh, North American battery makers to uh, actually compete with that? Uh, I don't think so because we are seeing such a big push for localization uh, of the supply chain. Um, you know, and that's being reflected in the, in the legislation that's being passed. Uh, and it's being reflected in you know the steps that the, the major automakers who are really the, the drivers of this uh, um, this industry, uh, the steps that they're taking. So I think that's, you know, we've, we've seen this trend uh, sort of since our founding. It was a little bit less apparent then than it is now. You know, it's uh, uh, hard to ignore today. Um, so we've really set ourselves up. Uh, what we see in, let's say, lithium and, and 
cobalt and nickel uh, today, I think uh, will be mirrored as we make the transition to the next generation of battery technologies. And that's where having lithium metal production capacity is going to be so key, especially lithium metal production capacity that's um, well adapted to operating in a North American or a European context. You know, North America and Europe are major auto producing regions. They will have a big chunk of this industry. It's going to be a big industry. And uh, uh, and the push for localization just means that more of the, the midstream and upstream is going to have to come here. What are the milestones uh, over the next 12 months? Uh, I believe that uh, you're wrapping up uh, matching. Yeah, so so it's uh, uh, it's a very exciting time for us. And there's a lot of things going on. Um, over the next 12 months, we're going to be completing a, a couple of studies, uh, engineering studies uh, for our commercial scale plants. Uh, obviously, we're continuing to advance our uh, our technology development and commercialization activities. We're uh, deepening our relationships with our uh, with our customers uh, as we sort of support uh, the qualification of our, our product and, and their products. Uh, for me, the, the most exciting sort of big milestone that's coming up is the... Um, uh, you know, we're, we're working to demonstrate continuous uh, metal production from our lithium carbonate-based uh, metal production process. And uh, you know, that, that pilot plant has, has just uh, started operating recently. We've got a very uh, sort of programmatic, uh, systematic program uh, to, to get us there. And uh, and that's going to be very exciting. So watch for that one. Obviously, as any of these developments uh, uh, come to fruition, we're going to be sure to, to keep the market informed. Uh, and uh, hopefully people can keep our, our uh, progress uh, or keep track of our progress as we go. Maje, thanks for speaking with Kiko. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's Maje Yasemski. He is CEO of Live Metal. My name is Michael McCray, and you're watching Kiko Mining.